it can have some small problems in some rare cases. One of the rare cases is what we call like a inverse shockwave. So, so in the in our solution, we have seen a shockwave that looks like this, right? So this is u, this is x, this is u equal to zero. We have seen a shockwave like that. So the inverse shockwave is a shockwave that goes the other way. So it's uh, actually so if this is zero, it's negative here, it jumps to positive here, and then that. So so let's say for example, let's take an example. The value of u. So this is x equal to zero, and this is u equal to one. This is u equal to minus one. Okay, clear. What this solution is? It's basically a heavy side function. Minus one when x is less than one, plus one when x is greater than one. I claim that if you put this initial condition in the solver we just did, the solution here is going to stay stationary. du dt is going to be zero for a solution like this. And why is du dt equal to zero? The only reason du dt can be zero is all the f interfaces are the same, right? Because du dt is the difference between two fluxes. So if all the flux values are the same, then du dt is of course zero. Why am I claiming f is going to be the same? Because, well, other than the two boundary conditions. Uh, so let's see if we get rid of the boundary conditions. So why is f interface the same? That is because all the f's are the same. All the f's are the same because u is either 1 or minus 1. Right, so so when you square this solution u, either one or minus one is gonna get you half. So all of this vector f is gonna be half. Therefore, all of this f interface is gonna be half. Therefore, du dt is gonna be zero. Any questions? No, right? So so let's say here we don't have a periodic domain. So let's, for example, we if we have a periodic domain, it goes like that. Then the solution is gonna stay the same forever, right? We have one normal shock over here and one inverted shock over here. But the inverted shock should not stay there. It should not exist. So let me let me answer the question why it should not exist. While this shock wave should exist and while this shock wave should not exist. Mathematically there is nothing that says this shock wave shouldn't exist actually. If you look at the differential equation, look at, I mean, when shockwave exists, there, you shouldn't look at the differential form of the equation, you should look at the integral form, right? If you look at the integral form, there is nothing that says that this shockwave shouldn't exist. A stationary solution is a perfectly valid solution, but you will never see that perfectly valid mathematical solution in real world. Because the differential equation we are solving is just an approximation of the limit of a viscous process as that viscosity goes to zero. Okay, again, it's a limit of a differential equation with very, very small viscosity. The Burgess equation we are solving, we actually don't want to solve the Burgess equation. So let me just uh, write it as f of u. We want to solve the Burgess equation with the infinitesimal epsilon times the second derivative of u with respect to x. That's a viscous term. That's actually why we want numerical viscosity when there is a shock wave, right? This is the physical viscosity that is there. We're just taking the limit of epsilon goes to infinity. Now, if you consider this equation, what is the effect of this epsilon term on the shape of the discontinuities? Okay, so if you just think of the heat equation, right? So just the uh, let's don't think about the nonlinear term for yet. Let's just think of the effect of this term. What does this? What what is the effect of this term? It smooths out, out non-smooth features, right? So so actually near discontinuities, this term is going to be infinitely larger in magnitude than the first order derivative term. So the effect of this is going to make the shock wave not exactly like this, but like that. Right, so it'll be smoothed out a little bit. The slope of the shock wave is no longer going to be infinity. Maybe it's still going to be 10 to the 
18 or something, it's going to be very, very large, but it's not going to be infinity. Now, if you look at, uh, now if you look at the XT diagram, and zoom into this region where on the left hand side is minus 1, on the right hand side, let's zoom into this region. At the left hand side, the characteristics is minus 1 going this way. At the positive side, it's going that way. But in the middle, there is a very tiny range of solutions that are between minus 1 and 1. What direction would the characteristic go within that very, very small range? So what you are going to see in a physical solution is there is, there is going to be a fan out there. There is going to be a fan out there that comes from an infinitesimal small range of solutions. Okay. So that's why when you look at a solution later on, you will no longer see an inverse shock lying over there. The solution should become like that after a while. Does it make sense? So if you if you cut the solution over here, the solution over here is still minus one, the solution here is still plus one, but in between there is gonna be a wider and wider range of solutions that lies in between zero and one. So so this slope is gonna be shallow and shallower. Numerically we are not going to capture that with the upwind scheme, we just code it up. Okay. But the fix is not very difficult. Do, 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 you, do you all understand what the problem is here? What is the problem we are, we are dealing with here? So, the solution to this is to always compute a numerical flux that is physical. And by physical here is, uh, there is a way to look at the entropy of the solution here, right? So if you have a small, even if you have an infinitesimal amount of viscosity, the entropy should not decrease, it should increase. While if you have a solution that is a inverse shock, uh, the entropy actually would decrease. So let me, let me say what is the, what is the non-physical solution? Non-physical solution is you have an inverse shock sitting over here and the characteristics emerges out of the discontinuity. So the entropy condition says that whenever you have a discontinuity, for example this one, characteristics can disappear into the discontinuity. I mean, when things disappear, it's an increase of entropy. But you cannot have any new information coming out of nowhere, coming out of a discontinuity, for example. So you should not have any new characteristics emerging out of a discontinuity. Okay, so you can, things can dissipate, can disappear, but it cannot come out of nowhere. So that's the so-called entropy condition we need to satisfy when we are using a numerical method to solve the differential equation. Okay, so this is, this is not allowed. And this is, this is okay.